Dear sisters and brothers, once again a very hearty welcome to this virtual Eucharistic Congress organized by the Afle Ministries. We are all reflecting on the significance of the Holy Eucharist in our Christian life. Let's for a moment invoke the Spirit of the Lord upon each one of us. Come, O Holy Spirit, inspire each one of us that we may truly realize the significance of the Holy Eucharist, the great power that we have in this great gift that the Lord has given us, that we may approach it with a due reverence, that we may draw strength from it for our Christian life, for our ordinary life. Blessed and praised be every moment, be the most holy and divine sacrament. Amen. So dear friends, we say that Eucharist is the center of our Catholic Church because of the simple reason that Jesus Christ is the center of the Catholic Church. Now the Church professes in very clear terms that Eucharist is nothing less than Jesus Christ himself. Now with great awe and reverence we approach the Holy Eucharist because in it Jesus Christ is here on earth again just as he was 2000 years ago and so his presence is not just present in mem he is not just present in memory he is not just spiritually present in the Eucharist he is on earth body and mind soul and divinity now the doctrine of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist is more than a, a, a convenient belief it is an absolute necessity. Why? Because the whole pattern of scriptural reading demands it and because church could not continue its life and work on earth without the bodily presence of Jesus upon this earth. Now in this short presentation, I would just like to look at the scene of the institution of the Holy Eucharist. When on that Passover day, Jesus took that board, that bread and wine and gave to the disciples and told them, this is my body, this is my blood. I'm just imagining and I want all of you to imagine with me what was going on in the mind of Jesus. Jesus who was a Jew, who was well versed in his own scriptures and he knew the significance of this, uh, this bread and wine in his scriptures. What was going on in the mind of Jesus? And so, my dear friends, I would invite you to look at some of the Old Testament texts which are referring to uh, the body, referring to the bread and wine or referring to food and drink which are, had a very great significance to their life, the people of the Old Testament. And when we look at it in the light of the Holy Eucharist, we, have, we find the great significance that Eucharist has in the, in the life of each one of us, in the life of the church, in the life of uh, of our Christian living and that is what I intend to do in this short reflection. The first text that I would like to bring before you is Exodus chapter 12 and we know what is in Exodus chapter 12 is the first Passover of the Jewish people. Uh, remember that the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt and deliverance was only a dream for those people who were under the mighty Egyptians. They suffered there they worked for their, for their masters, uh, they were exploited for their masters and we hear in Deuteronomy the people of Israel cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard their cry and God sent Moses. And we read again in the book of Exodus how Moses will plead before Pharaoh uh, for freeing the people. He would uh, with the power of God do wonders there before Pharaoh. But the heart of Pharaoh was only hardened. He would not let the people go. And then God asked Moses to tell the people of Israel to have the first Passover. Now the Israelites had to eat the flesh of the sacrifice whose blood was spread to save them from the death of their firstborn child. Now the Passover liturgy revolved around the body and blood of the lamb. Now in the Last Supper, Jesus focuses on his own body and blood, placing himself as a sacrificial lamb. 
He takes the bread and explains it in a new light. This is my body. But the gospel suggests that Jesus was celebrating the Passover meal in the upper room with his disciples at the Last Supper. We, we read that in Matthew 26, in Mark 14, Luke 22, uh, again in 1 Corinthians 11. Jesus gave the Passover a new meaning. The Eucharist fulfills the Jewish Passover through the Paschal mystery. Now from the Jewish perspective, those who eat the Passover meal are not just celebrating the historical significance of the first Passover. They are actually participating in the saving events of the Passover. The Passover events are those that led to the liberation of the Hebrew slaves from Egypt. Passover marks their deliverance from oppression and the flight from Egypt that would take them to a land of freedom and prosperity. Because of the Passover, they are now a, a free to be people uniquely dedicated to God who liberates them. We read that in Exodus 12, 1 to 17. Eating the Passover is itself an act of liberation. Difference on that last supper day when Jesus was taking that bread and wine and offering to his disciples and telling them this is my body and blood. He was in fact telling them this is the means for true deliverance. And so when we approach the Eucharist, when we receive the Eucharist, when we are before the Eucharistic presence of, 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 presence of the Lord, remember dear friends, now that is the right means for us for our deliverance from all that is binding us. Now as human beings, we are bound by many things. And if we crave for deliverance, if we crave for freedom, the, the powerful means that we have, the, the great power that is there in the Eucharist is to, that power to deliver us, to free us. Maybe from some of our weaknesses, maybe some of, from some of our sinful habits, maybe from some flaws in our character. The Lord would ask us to come to Him uh, with the due preparation to receive Him, receive Him in the Eucharist and let us be sure Eucharist has that power to set us free. Eucharist has that power to deliver us, to give us freedom. And so, uh, in the light of the Exodus, in the light of the Passover, when we look at the Eucharistic presence of Jesus, it is telling us it is the means for us for complete deliverance. Deliverance from all that is binding us, from all that is enslaving us. Let's come to another text. Exodus 16. And we know again what, hap what happens in Exodus 16. In Exodus 16, we read God giving to the people of Israel while they were in the desert, the manna, the bread from heaven, manna. Remember, dear friends, this manna was given by God to the people of Israel when they were in desert. And desert often speaks about a place of temptation. Now, you have to look at the temptation of Jesus. Jesus goes to the desert and there he is tempted by the devil. And so when the people of Israel were in the land of temptation, when they were in desert, God gave them a special bread, bread to strengthen them. That was manna. The manna was from heaven given by God to the people in the desert during Exodus is clearly an anticipation or foreshadowing of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the new manna. In fact, the Jewish people expected that there would be a new miracle of manna when the Messiah would come. As God fed the people with bread from heaven on their journey in the desert to the promised land, so God feeds us with bread in this desert of life filled with many, many temptations. The bread is different. However, since the bread of the Eucharist is the bread of life, it is Jesus himself, his flesh that gives life through the Holy Spirit. St. Paul in his letters would often speak about the way out of temptation. Now the chief means that he suggests is again Eucharist, participation in the Eucharist, taking part in the Eucharist, partaking of the Eucharist, partaking of the body and blood of Jesus. Now we believe as Catholics in making many penitential sacrifices to break the power of temptation in our life. No? We fast, we do many penance in order to break the, the power of the temptation. 
Let us remember among all sacrifices, the chief sacrifice is the Eucharist. No? Eucharist is a sacrifice. And so everything fits so well. Uh, when we partake of the Eucharist, when we participate in the Eucharist, when we celebrate the Eucharist, it gives us that great power to break us free from temptations. It is a manna that God, that Jesus gives us every day in order to strengthen us in moments of temptations. Now the Savior told us uh, to those who believe in him as uh, uh, that, that we could, eat with great faith, we could say to the mountain to move and the mountain will move. I dare to say uh, it is even more difficult to face the temptations of life than it is to move the rocky mountains. But this is possible. We can. Uh, we can stand uh, strong against the temptations of life uh, because we have the omnipotent God who became man in our midst. Jesus is present in the Eucharist and that Jesus can strengthen us and that Jesus can give us the power to withstand all temptations of life. Now Don Bosco, the friend of youth, used to tell his boys in order to fight the temptations that the means is to have recourse to the sacraments, recourse to the sacrament of reconciliation and the worthy reception of the Eucharist. Now that is wisdom, dear friends. And so uh, maybe the temptations of the world in which we live, may the temptations of the body, may the temptations of the mind let us be sure, in order to fight against all these temptations, in order to withstand all these temptations, we have this great power that is given to us in the Holy Eucharist. Eucharist is a manna that God gives us in the desert of life, in this life filled with temptations. And when we approach this Eucharist, when we draw strength from the Eucharist, we will be able to withstand all temptations of life. Okay, 1 Kings, let's uh, focus our attention on 1 Kings chapter 19 and there we have the story of prophet Elijah. In fact, these days in the first reading, we are reading the story of prophet Elijah. And so, after that great uh, sacrifice on Mount Carmel, we find Elijah fleeing away uh, uh, in fear of Jezebel. Now, Jezebel had already commanded her soldiers to, to finish off Elijah, to kill Elijah. And so Elijah runs away, the powerful prophet runs away and then Elijah reaches the desert in great despair. He sits under a broom tree and it is symbolically uh, Elijah had given up all hope. He was in despair He had almost like committing suicide. He sits in the desert under a broom tree. And then we hear that beautiful passage wherein God would send an angel with bread and water. And prophet Elijah will, will take that bread and he will eat that bread, drink that water. And then it is said that he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights and reached the mountain of the Lord. He reached Mount Horeb. Strength for the journey. Prophet Elijah received that strength for, for, the, for the journey from that bread and from that water given to him by God, given to him through the angel. And so when Jesus was giving that bread and wine to the disciples and he was asking the disciples to partake of it, he was telling them, take this, this is my body, this is my blood, food for your journey, food for your journey of life. Eucharist is a food for our journey towards heaven, journey to heaven. Now that is why Eucharist is often called the viaticum in, uh, uh, in a Latin word which means with you on the way with you on the way. The Eucharist is a spiritual food. As a manna provided bodily nourishment to the Israelites in the desert, the new manna, Jesus, the Eucharistic presence provi provides spiritual nourishment for us, satisfying our hungry hearts. And so as we sing so often in the popular hymn, you satisfy the hungry heart with the gift of finest wheat, come. Give us, O oh saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. In Psalm 78 verse 25, the manna is described as a bread of angels. Now, it was not eaten by angels, of course, but it was angelic in its supernatural origin. The Eucharist is only the bread of angels because of its effect in our souls. 
Now, as the angels have a participation in the divine life through grace and glory, and thus can be said to partake of this bread, so we are nourished in sanctifying grace through the Holy Communion, through the Eucharist, a participation in divine life. And so we receive the bread of angels in the Eucharist in the new manna. And so dear friends, let us realize that we all need the strength of the Eucharist on this earthly journey. Now we are all journeying towards heaven, the destiny that is set for each one of us. And when we travel towards that heaven in this sojourn, we need that strength from the Eucharist for our body, for our mind, for our inner self to remain focused, not to lose the way, not to be discouraged, not to fall into despair. We need strength. And where do we have that strength? Of course, that strength is offered to us in the Holy Eucharist. Jesus in the Eucharist gives us that strength. Now, He is that uh, water. He is that bread. Partaking of it, we can also travel 40 days and 40 nights, much more than all that. And we can also reach the mountain of the Lord. We can reach Mount Horeb we can reach God, our destiny. Once again, dear friends, let's come to Exodus chapter 12. Uh, in Exodus chapter 12, in the context of the first Passover, we find uh, God asking the people of Israel to take the blood of the lamb and put it on their, doors, uh, on their doorposts. And then the angel of death passed by. They were saved. Their firstborns were saved. Salvation. Now, when Jesus took that bread and wine and offered to the disciples and asked them to eat of it, to partake of it, he was telling, now this is the means for your salvation. Eucharist, my dear friends, is not simply something that, uh, that strengthens us. It's not something that gives us some bodily strength, some nourishment. No, it is something that, that makes us capable of receiving the salvation for attaining the salvation. Now that is the power of the Holy Eucharist. Eucharist is therefore our participation in the saving self-sacrifice of Christ. When we eat his body and drink his blood, we receive his divine life and abide in his salvation, receiving forgiveness, healing, transformation and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Eucharist is thus the fiery center of our Christian life. Uh, it, 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 something that, uh, that, uh, that makes us part of the church. Something that renews us, uh, reconstructs us week after week, day after day when we receive the Holy Eucharist. As St. Paul said, he, we who are many uh, are one body for we all partake of the one bread. Now, that is something that even constitutes our community. That is something that constitutes the church because we all partake of this one bread that Jesus gives the Eucharist. So given the Eucharist central place in our salvation, we should prepare, uh, prepare ourselves to receive it. Now we do that by, by fasting from midnight to, uh, the night before we fast and, and thus we prepare to receive it for it is something that makes us uh, that prepares us for salvation, that effects salvation in us, effects salvation. We do, this, we do that by praying beforehand, before receiving the Eucharist. We spend moment in preparation, we pray for that. We, we spend time after the Eucharist, once again thanking God for this nourishment, thanking God for the salvation that He is giving us through the Eucharist. And so, let us remember, Eucharist is something that gives us salvation. So when we receive the, the Eucharist, let us realize it is something that is making us part of God. It is something that is giving us that entry pass into heaven, into a divine life with him. Again, we come to Exodus 24. Uh, we have got once again that the new covenant established there by uh, Moses would do an act of purification. He would sprinkle the blood on the people of Israel and thus a covenant is reformed there. A new covenant in blood shows a relationship with God. Once again, the people of Israel become part of God. They become God's own people. God becomes their 
their real God. Yahweh becomes their God. God becomes part of us. We become part of God. That act happens in our reception of the Holy Eucharist. We become part of God. God becomes part of us. And so in the Old Testament reading from the book of Exodus 24 is an account of Moses sealing the covenant between the Lord of Israel or uh, uh, the Lord and Israel on Mount Sinai. This covenant ceremony demonstrated that Israel was a unique community in the ancient world in that uh, uh, that that uniqueness came uh, because of their special relationship with with God. And uh, uh, twice when when Moses reads aloud the stipulations of the covenant, the Israelites would respond. We will do everything that the Lord has told us. The blood of the young bulls which seals the covenant symbolizes the shared bond of life between the Lord and his people. Like many ancient peoples, the Israelites understood that the blood contains life. We read in Deuteronomy 12, 23, etc. The blood contains life. And so when Moses splashes half the blood on the altar and he sprinkles the other half on the people, he is binding the Lord and his people in a common life. They have now become one in a union of wills. The Lord and Israel form a single family, a communion of life. Dear friends, that is the great mystery which happens in our reception of the Holy Eucharist. When we receive the Lord in the Eucharist, what happens is that we become one. We and God become one in a, in a union of wills. He's offering, uh, we become part of God. God becomes part of us. We become a privileged people. Look at the wonder that is there, the great mystery of the Eucharist, something that really binds us together, binds us together as a community, something that binds us and our God. Finally, dear friends, I would invite your attention to Ezekiel 47. And in Ezekiel 47, we have got the beautiful presentation of the river that flows from the temple. And wherever the river flows, uh, the trees uh, that bears fruit in all season, the, the spring of water eventually forms into a life-giving river. On its banks, the fruit-bearing trees grow, uh, whose leaves serve as medicine. The river flows into sea and enables fish to flourish there. That river represents God's grace, which flows to the people of Israel from the temple. In that, Ezekiel's prophecy anticipates the grace that flows to us from the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a source of life for the church because it provides us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our spiritual nourishment. Its grace flows from the altar where we celebrate it, just as the life-giving river flows from the altar in Ezekiel's prophecy. When we partake of the Eucharist, dear brothers and sisters, we are drinking from this river. We are given life, unending life, by drinking it, by partaking of it. Yet, what is uh, even more astounding to me is, is the holistic dimension of this passage. The whole creation is changed by the river which flows from the heart of the sanctuary, which is the Eucharist. Eucharist changes the whole creation. Now, this is the power of the Eucharist uh, when we receive it with faith and with due preparation. It recreates us. It enables us to produce fruit. It transforms us. It makes us capable of sacrificing ourselves for the salvation of others. Dear friends, this is uh, uh, the, the message, the strong message that comes across to me. And which I communicate to you, uh, to all of you who are participating in this virtual Eucharistic Congress. Uh, let us truly become aware of the power of the Eucharist for our ordinary living, for our normal Christian living. Uh, a power which can set us free, free, free from all that is binding us, all that is enslaving us. 
a power which can defend us from all temptations of life whatever be it all temptations of life a power can really nourish us through throughout our journey of life a power which can offer us salvation life with god a power which makes us part of god and god part of us a power which will transform us and enable us to produce fruit and so my invitation to each one of us is that let us approach this great power with utmost reverence and love so that this power will be operative in us and through us to many people blessed and praised be every moment be the most holy and divine sacrament 